Ah, yeah, it's Jason in Jason's Jungle. And uh, I think it's about time we have a walk around the plot. So come on, I'll show you my plot tour. So we're into the new territories here. Now my grapevines are starting to get their leaves coming out. Again, slower than last year. And we've got flowers on the blueberries. Never get blueberries on the blueberries, just flowers. The birds always seem to like them. And then hidden behind me pink lemonade blueberry, which is a pink berry, we have all my spuds. So I have pink fur apples, I've got Heidi Reds, I've got um, Purple Majesty and hidden right at the back. That back bucket with the orange rope on it is a single King Edward. Here's the dwarf um, juice and heart jokes that I found that I thought had died. So we've got five in one bucket. And the bucket just beyond, we've got one of the larger bits, which was still small. And that's coming on okay. Now if we go around to the herbs, you can see that the golden marjoram is just exploding away. This was all hacked back and it's coming back. The curry plant, well there's a few, bit of life at the bottom. But you can hardly see it now. Oops, sorry about that spin. Um, the fig is starting to get leaves on it coming out. The rosemary went all leggy. And the sage at the back doing, well, sprawling all over the place and trying to take over the world. Next up we have my garlic bed. So these are, in the front, we've got two rows of elephant garlic that was planted from combs that grew last year. Then we've got a couple of rows of elephant garlic that was planted from mollo bulbs that developed from the combs that grew the year before. Then we've got uh, some spring onions down here. Oopsie. Elephant garlic from cloves. Then three types of garlic here. I can't remember which one's which. I think the one at the back is extra early white. And the other two we've got um, extra early purple and Iberian. But I can't remember which one's which at the minute. Onto my main crop onions. I've got some spring onions going away nicely. And then all of these were the onions that I planted this year. This bed has gone weedy. It needs to be sorted out. Here we have my perennial root veg. Sounds strange because you have to dig them up to eat, but this seems to be working. These are scores and error. Uh, getting ready to flower up here. If you look, you can see the flower heads coming. And basically once that's doing that, I'll cut it back and let it regrow. But for the perennial bit, you can always take these side shoots, replant them and grow them back again. But I'll be cutting this back for compost and then letting it regrow and then I'll try harvesting some of the roots in uh, autumn. We scan over that, we come to this bit here, which is leeks. These are just the regular leek seeds, sown a few years ago, 2016. And these were what were left and planted out here. And you can see they form clumps like this. So that clump was one leak that basically splits and uh, multiplies once it dies back and regrows. So what I do is I dig up this clump, take these smaller ones and replant them elsewhere and take the bigger ones and eat them. You can see I'm getting rust. That's a bane here. I always get rust and it means I have to harvest my garlic and stuff early. But I've sprayed them this year with the bicarbonate of potassium and a bit of neem oil and I'm hoping that's going to keep the rust under control. Now at the back of this I've got another plant 
which I'll try and get you into. And this is skillet, another root veg, also known as sugar root. Um, these were offcuts that took a uh, year or so ago and they're growing nicely here. And then at the back here, you can see this little patch here. That's some earth chestnuts, which will be allowed to bulk up. And then we've got some society garlic next to it. My beans aren't looking too bad, they're starting to climb up the uh, the ropes. They were a bit better, they were just had to go out because they were just far too far gone. Uh, and they were a bit battered by the weather, the rain and stuff. But they seem to be perking up. Hopefully I'll get enough surviving to get a decent crop. Um, these ones here are gigantes, they're looking a wee bit worse for wear. But there does seem to be new growth coming in at the bottom which will hopefully uh, give us a reasonable crop because we'll like them as dried beans. Look at all those weeds, I'll be tackling that later on in the day. Um, but if we look down, see this is some uh, Clitonia, I think, Mainers lettuce, which has gone to seed. So hopefully this will be spreading seed for next year all over the place. We've got more of the uh, earth chestnut. Behind that, this purpley coloured leaf here. I think that's Japanese parsley, uh, perennial. I'm just letting it grow and bulk up to see how it grows. We've got here perutil, which is a type of Welsh onion that never flowers. I'm hoping to get it bunched up enough so that I get a decent patch of that. We've got Allium Nutans, or I think it's Siberian Chives or something, is another name for them, um, which is another Allium. Volunteer Potatoes, I'll have to pull them out. And we've got Paul and Becky's Asturian Cabbage, tree cabbage. So this is a great cabbage, a loose leaf cabbage. Uh, it lasts for a few years and it's really nice flavour. Then we come over here to these leeks here. As you can see, loads of flower. Now I leave these to flower because the tops turn into little purple bulbs. So it's got a nice ornamental look to it, but also I put the, I'm going to be putting those bulbs around them to get a nice patch. Uh, this is sand leek. They're nice for you, that small leek but um, tasty. These are the rest of King Edwards. They're doing nice. These are for Erica's Little Welsh Gardens challenge for shop bought potatoes, one and a half kilograms. So I got, let's see, 10, 13, 14 plants, one of which is in the bucket. And we'll just see how they go. Some endives. Uh, these ones aren't going too good. These are just my potatoes left over at one green or left over the uh, potato bag. Uh, not doing much, but there's still time for them to come through. Now you might not be able to see this, the weeds, but there's a whole load of Welsh onions in here. Let's see if I can pan around and get a better view of them. So there's loads there and there's even more down here. So I think I need to dig this up, take out the grass, and uh, replant them all. So I'll lose the flowers off them, but that's fine. This is a sorrel, which is a perennial. Um, it doesn't flower, it's called patience, I think. So I started off with one little plant, I've now got three reasonably big plants. A few more Welsh onions, and then a couple more over there. Again, I need to, like I said, weed this bed. We've got a couple of other things in here. Babington leeks. These have a great purple flower head that's full of little bulbs. And they taste just like normal leeks, but you can harvest them without taking the bulb and they'll grow back. So I'm letting these to flower so I can build up more uh, stock. 
and just keep replanting them. Once these die down, I'll over plant with lettuce and stuff. Now you might see here these twigs. These twigs join down the bottom to rocket uh, what I planted here last year. And the plant's coming back, so there's uh, some perennial rockets, so this might be one of them. Uh, but it's grown, and we'll see what we'll get off of it. Another one of those tree cabbages. Um, I think there's some coriander grown there, self-sown. Then we have, this is a globe artichoke. Then in here, we have a Caucasian spinach. And these little clumps of green down here. There's a few dark ones, look a little bit like potato leaf coming up. That's Lincoln Shrest Spinach or Good King Henry. I basically dug up a plant and split it up, uh, giving this about a half a dozen to a dozen or so new plants there. If we just look up to that bed over there, I'll get you up. You can see another mulch, over the mulch, is my cardoons, which are doing really nice. And these are my Jerusalem artichokes. These are what the fuse are, I think. Um, the bath was underneath the hedge almost the last few years, so it's never done really well. So I took it out, moved out here, mixed up a load of new compost into it, and replanted, and they're coming up the tree. And down here, we have one bulb, one tuber, planted out into a 30 litre pot, just to see how much one tuber will give us. Now up there we have the weedy bit which I need to tackle, I'll be doing that as well today. In here, we've got some Scotch lovage. So unlike normal lovage, which grows about six to seven feet tall, this is as tall as the skets, and the same flavour. There's some leeks here, which are supposed to be Babington leeks, but I don't know if they are, because the uh, flowers look wrong. Um, kales here, that's uh, Taunton Dean and Dobetons. In here, the leaky things, they're elephant garlics, those are combs which grew over winter. And I throw all my combs into this area, let them grow, then take out what's grown and move it down the line. So we've got quite a few there grown. So that'll be quite a few to plant up to get mono bulbs and then big bulbs. Next one along we have bronze fennel and then the sweet sicily lovely plant i like that I'm, I'm still haven't got the courage to dig it up and split it up for roots for its roots yet uh, there's a couple of plants down here that are grown from it for the seeds so i might try that this year the rhubarb harvested quite a bit of it this year it's doing nicely uh, and it's doing five households so between this this patch and the one underneath the uh, see-through shack. Now I can't remember if that's a quince or medlar. I've got both of them planted here. Um, but that one, I think it might be the medlar. It's full of uh, flower. So hopefully that becomes full of fruit. But I will come back to that later on in the year when I find out what it is and uh, see if I've got fruit from it. Again, I need to hit that with the uh, bush cutter up there to get rid of all these weeds and find all the other plants I've planted in there. 